worship with you guys. If you're out in the hallways and the foyers, come on in and find a seat. Well, great to see you this morning. Let's stand together. Let's begin our service worshiping our great God. He has done good things for us, and he ain't finished yet.
morning. It's great to see you here at Central. Right now, we want you to take a minute, find somebody you haven't seen yet, shake their hand, put a smile on your face. It's gonna be a great day. Well, good morning. You may be seated. We are so glad you're here, family, to worship with us today. And if you're visiting with us, in front of you is a Connect card. Take that, fill that out, place that in the offering plate as that's passed later in the service. Look at this good-looking fella here on the front row. That is Noah McCormick. Woo, got a jacket on. That is because he is preaching today. Amen. He is, he is going to do such a great job, did a great job in first service, and he is filling in for Pastor Brian because Pastor Brian and Miss Brenda are with their brand new grandbaby, amen? That is so exciting, so we are so glad they get to do that. And also, let me announce this, that on January 26th, we're going to be baptizing, amen? Oh, come on, that's worth giving a hand for, amen? Yes, so, so exciting that will be. Of course, January 26th, and that'll be an exciting time, and so an exciting to hear from Noah today. So why don't we go to the Lord and say, thank you, Jesus, for all you've done for us. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much that our interim pastor, Brian, gets to be, and of course, Miss Brenda, with their new grandbaby. Lord, you are the giver of life. I know that some of us have had a rough time of it lately, but we always need to be reminded that you give life. And that is why we're here today. Because, Father, you gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to give us eternal life. Those of us that call upon the name of the Lord. So we are here to celebrate life today. Thank you for Ryland and the team leading us to the throne in praise and worship because you are worthy. We are here to worship your name. And we lift up our brother Noah, as he comes to preach the Word of God in spirit and in truth, and that we will praise and worship you today. And Father, leave this place different than we came in. And of course, Father, let today be the day of salvation for those in this place that do not know you. Let them embrace Jesus Christ as Messiah so they too can have eternal life. We love you, we praise you, and we worship you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Rylan? Amen. Church, would you stand with me? And let's do as Psalm 100 says. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. So let's enter his gates with thanksgiving. Let's enter his courts with praise. Let's give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. So let's join together and ask God to tune our hearts to sing his grace.
Christ has done. Here I raise. Here I raise my Ebenezer. Hither by thy help I come. And I hope by thy good pleasure safely to goodness like a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee See you later. 
Amen. Let's fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith this morning. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my savior on that cursed tree his body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah still and all alone Oh praise the name of the
join our voices one more time and let's just sing that simple chorus. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Would you do that with me? Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise his name forevermore. For endless days we will sing your praise. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord our God. And all of God's people said, Amen. Hey, it's great to worship with you through song this morning, to set our eyes on Jesus. You know, I love that first part of Come Thou Fount, because me as a musician, it speaks to me every Sunday, where it says, tune my heart to sing your grace. And sometimes I feel like I'm like this guitar when I come in here Sundays, and I need to kind of retune myself to truly hear from the Lord. And I pray that through this time of worship, that's maybe what's happened to your heart. And so as we open up the scripture, you truly would hear what God is speaking to you this morning and that when we hear it, we will act and obey. Amen? All right, you can be seated this morning. And we're gonna continue in worship as we do Sunday after Sunday through our tithes and offerings, through giving. It's a a very important part of our worship. Uh, If we say that God owns every part of us, he has to own that part. And we wanna be generous people because God is generous with his grace. So if you came prepared to give this morning, uh, go ahead and grab that uh, envelope, or maybe you've already given online. You're one of those that gives faithfully online, and you did that this week. Grab that card in the seat back in front of you that says, I gave online. Place that in the plate as we pass those in just a moment. The ushers are gonna go ahead and come on down to the front and grab their plates and get ready to pass that. If you're not ready yet, we always got offering boxes at each exit that you can drop those in as well. You can put that Connect card in there as well today. And why do we give? It's not that God needs our money, right? It's something that God wants for us, not from us. It makes us more like Christ. So Jeff McMurphy is our deacon of the week and he is gonna come and pray over our offering. Let's pray. Dear Father, I just come to you right now and I just praise you and I glorify you. I do thank you as Ryland said for the fact that you want us to be part of your ministry. Part of that is the worship of giving, dear Father. Dear Lord, I pray right now that as we prepare to give, you would give us the right heart, the right attitude, dear God, the um, feeling of anticipation, dear Father, of what you have in store to do with what we give, dear Father. Dear Lord, not only of our money, but of our time, dear Father, I pray that you would help us to give what you ask us, dear Father. Right now, as we prepare to give, dear Father, I pray your blessings upon the, the worship service. I pray your, your hand on Noah as he comes to speak to us, dear Father, and I pray that you would be glorified through that, dear Father. Um, right now, I pray for the giver, I pray for the gift, and I pray that you would bless it and do immeasurable things with it. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Right now, we're going to dismiss our kiddos to go off to Children's Church. Ages four years old through kindergarten can be dismissed right out those doors over there. And now our first through fourth graders can line up to head off to Children's Church. Parents, if this is your child's first time to go to Children's Church, maybe just slip out those doors and fill out a name tag and security tag. That way we can pair you up safely after the service. The younger group will be halfway down the hall and this older group is all the way down around the corner at what we call Kids Central. They're gonna have a great time, but so are you because the one and only Noah McCormick is in the house and he's ready to preach. So let's give him a warm central welcome. Hello and welcome to the party. I'm just kidding. Hey, um, welcome uh, to Central. Um, I usually am able to, to give the announcements on Sunday morning, so I'm glad that I get to extend uh, my time up here to, you know, not make fun of myself, but you'll do that for me. Um, I'm just kidding. I, I am so blessed to, to be here, um, here at Central. Um, have been here. If you're if you're not aware, I am the youth pastor here. I uh, love my job. It's a, my dream job um, to be able to provide for my family uh, while uh, serving the Lord, um, ministering to to teenagers. And it's it's been an honor to be here at Central specifically. Um, and I've been here for six months. So, yeah, yeah. yay! Yeah. Made it five months longer than Kevin thought I was going to. So, um, I'm just kidding. Um, Hey, this morning, um, what we are doing is in, instead of, and this is, you'll see why, um, but um, by design, we are um, not looking at a story in the Bible um, or even just one scripture inside of the Bible. Uh, we're looking conceptually into something that I think that plagues us all. And it is from the valley to the mountaintop and back again. We're not really going to talk about the back again again. You'll figure it out why. Um, but, but we all kind of know just by, by the heading where I'm heading with this. Um, we have all been on that mountaintop. We have all been in that valley. We know kind of what um, is going on there. And I just want to outline that a little bit. What, what are we supposed to do when we're on the mountaintop? What are we supposed to do when we're in the valley? And somewhere in between there, I think we're going to figure out what we're supposed to do. And, um, and I, I was kind of wrestling over how to start um, the sermon. So uh, I did what, what any literary genius does. I'm not really a literary genius. Um, but I, um, I wrote a short story for you guys. Are you guys ready to hear it? Okay. So I need you guys to like, the other, yes, that's okay, yes. All right, so here it goes. Um, let's just say there's a little, little Johnny. Hey, we all know little Johnny. Anyway, um, little Johnny was born into a good family, and he lived in a good area, and his family made pretty all right money. At the age of five, daddy's, or daddy, ooh, uh, Johnny's dad lost his job. And when he lost his job, along with it came the nice house and all the money and all the security. And uh, they had to move into a lower income housing. And um, his dad had to struggle a little bit for some money. And, and uh, Johnny and his family weren't on that mountaintop anymore. Well, Johnny's dad had a dream and he went for that dream and he started a business. Well, that business became more and more and more um, successful. So he was able to buy a nicer house, move them back into a nicer area, um, and everything was going really well. And, and the years flew by, and, and I know that all of us know what that feels like. And as you get older, it goes by faster and faster. I, I, I can say for myself, once I became a dad, um, time is not relative anymore because it just flies on by. Um, well, same thing happened with Johnny. Um, and his family. Time went on, and, and Johnny was about to graduate, and Johnny's mom was diagnosed with cancer, and the doctors didn't give him very long to live. So, or her very long to live. So, um, during his freshman year of college, Johnny's mom died. A few months later, Johnny's dad developed a drinking problem, and by the end of Johnny's sophomore year, his dad had lost his business and the financial means to put Johnny through college. Johnny was kind of at a crossroads because he needed the financial help, but he also wanted to pursue this degree, which the degree was in business. So he could go into business with his dad, but there's no business 
to go into with his dad, so he kind of felt lost. Well, he decided to continue with college, finished college um, with no job, no prospect, but also with a heap of medical, or not medical, but um, college debt. As he tried to pay, pay it down by, by getting job after job after job, kind of climbing a, a, a ladder at work, he saw this wonderful, beautiful woman, and his heart just melted. Well, later on, he married that woman, and him and his wife working, they, they started climbing their own corporate ladders, and um, they, they moved into a nicer house, a nicer area, and they moved from apartment to small little apart or a small house that they were living on top of each other to now a nice house that they could bring kids home, and that's exactly what they did. They brought two wonderful, beautiful kids home. And life was amazing. And as, as time went on, um, Bill's, he wasn't making any more, he was making more money, but, but the, the, he was spending just as much. Life was very, very expensive. And, um, and he got into some bi- bad financial um, trouble and he was trying to dig his way out and his parents and her parents couldn't help him out and, and they were trying to figure out so they just added more debt onto it. And the weight of this world and the weight of debt and the weight of marriage even, because I think that we can all speak to marriage is not fun all of the time. We, we have to wrestle sometimes, right? <laughs> anyway, um, So the bills started stacking up, and marriage wasn't very, hard, or very easy. Um, children's need, needs became a little bit more expensive each and every year, and eventually that weighed on Johnny, and Johnny found a way to cope with that, and that ended up being a very unhealthy way to cope with it. So as he continued down these unhealthy vices, of course, how, how unhealthy vices do, they never get better, they only get worse. And it caused a rift between his wife and him. And his wife came to him and said, Johnny, you need to fix this. You need to figure this out because I cannot handle it any longer. And Johnny half-heartedly did that, but he had so much pressure on himself and he was taking so much onto himself that he let his marriage slip away. One day, his wife and his kids left. Johnny was then at the, the, the biggest decision of his life. Does he clean up his life and become the man that his wife and his kids deserve? Or does he self-indulge himself even more into driving him into doing even more questionable things? Now, this is where I stopped writing the story. I did that on purpose because I tried writing a happy ending and it was just like too mushy. And then I tried writing a like a sad ending, and like, I was like, this is stupid, Johnny, you want to do that? And, um, but, but it works perfectly for what we're talking about. We, you may not, your name might be Johnny, you, your dad might have lost um, his job at five, you married some beautiful woman, you had two kids, and you're inside of the same situation where they've left now. But that might be you, but change starts not. But we can all kind of piece together the pieces and say, we, we have either been touched by one of these tragedies or we are smack dab in the middle of a crisis. And when, when you first hear from valley to mountaintop, you probably think, I, I know all too well the valley. And I hope and I pray that you can think back to some of those times where you were on the proverbial mountaintop. So looking at the mountaintop from the world's perspective, that is 100% glorified and, and looked up to. If you're on the mountaintop, these are people who are, are all the time, be like celebrities that you don't feel like will ever fall from grace. When they do, they're in the valley and we all know about it, right? Um, but the people who are, are rich, their kids are obedient. Their, their, um, their husbands or their wives don't say anything embarrassing when they're out in public. Like I say embarrassing of Caitlin sometimes, which is, you know. Um, but we, we, we glorify this mountaintop and we say that, that that is the standard, that we must live inside of the mountaintop. And I want to tell you that that, that is smoke. 
And, and I, th- I think we see through Facebook and I think we see through, uh, through other social media and on the news and stuff like that, that everyone is basically teetering on this teeter-totter of one decision is from valley to mountaintop, right? And I think we've all been on the receiving end of horrible news, and we say, holy moly cannoli, that was some bad news, right? And and we we can, like, feel like, oh, man, just thinking back to that news that you got or that decision that was made that you, it, it just crushed you. But we also, I hope, know of the great joy where you, you feel like, I am invincible. Or, or this, is, this turned out way better than I could have ever hoped or imagined. And I think that, that we, we get on this teeter-totter and we, we look at other people and we, we, we measure our lives towards that. And, and today is not about other people. This is about specifically you. That, that you know specifically what God has brought you to and through. That there's no, there's no other person inside of this room. Just imagine that you're hearing this from God, not from Noah, from the word of God, which we're going to look at in a second, about how God has brought you to and through valleys and mountains, and we're, we're, we're just going to see what God intends for us to do. So maybe you felt the, the, the sun on your face from the mountaintop, and that's a good feeling, um, or the darkness and coldness of that the valley brings. Um, but if someone was to ask you um, if you want the good news or the bad news first inside of any situation, um, we're people, and we think that the good news is always going to trump the, um, the bad news. So we say, give me the bad news first, and then I will let you know, uh, and then I'll, I'll react to the good news, and, and maybe the good news is what's going to cover up the bad news, and, and we can just like do this like dance of like, okay, what's going to make this easier for me, to uh, more palatable, what's going to be easier for me to take this pill? Well, we're not doing that. We're starting with the good stuff because I think that it causes more drama. Um, just kidding. Um, you guys need to laugh or something because like, okay, thanks. Um, I work with youth and that's, so like the entire time, it's just like laugh, 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 Jesus loves you. And then people get saved. So I don't know. Um, but yeah, there's your laugh. Okay. Um, so today... While we look at the mountain, while we look at, 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 at the good part of all of this, um, it would be good if I had my notes in order. Um, oh, well, that works. Um, yeah, I see what happened. To God be the glory. Okay. Um, all right. Um, we, we have all felt the feeling of being on the mountaintop, I really hope. And being on the mountaintop means a lot of things. Um, it means that you, you are blinded by the, the bad stuff in this world. You, you, you are looking at your life through a lens that is momentary. We, we want the, the mountaintop to be a plateau instead of a peak, right? We, we, we don't want to get to the mountaintop and think, and think oh, I'm only going to enjoy this for a second. No, we want our lives to reflect that mountaintop. We want our children to enjoy that mountaintop. We, we want to live inside of God's glory. But I mean, God intended for us to enjoy the stuff in this world, Right? I, I, I don't think that we should self-indulge. I don't think that we, uh, that we should go crazy on, on the, the things of this world. But, but God definitely does give us joy for a reason, right? And if we're going to continue uh, to, to follow God and honor God with, with our lives, we've got to see that God has never, um, never left us in a place where, we're, where he's like, I want you to feel pain. See, the Bible says that um, in the very last psalm, in the very last verse, this is how David um, concludes psalms, and he says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord, praise the Lord. That no, no matter what, whoever you are, whatever circumstance you're in, God requests praise. And that's what you're supposed to do on the mountaintop, is praise God. You've got no other need, or you've got no other uh, 
remedy to your, your, your good stuff than to praise God because God is the one who gave it to you. It says, um, that's what I was trying to find. Um, must be missing a page, you guys. Um, but that every good and perfect gift comes from above. That from, from the God who, um, who, who's not holding back, right? Uh, th- that, that the God that is in light and, and is not shifted by shadows, right? That, that, that the, there's no darkness with God. There's only goodness with God. So if there's a good thing that comes from God, it is going to be really, really good. And when we look at our lives and we, we kind of weigh what is good and what, wh- what should we look at, we should know that God is not just good because we say good. We say tacos are good. And tacos are very good, you guys. But Tacos are not as good as God. So we, we, we muddy up this word of good and what God must mean. So when we talk to people about Jesus, we say, we say God is good. You say, you know what? My ex-boyfriend was good. He cheated on me. Or he's good. Oh, well, you know what? This or that was good, and that didn't end up very well for me. See, we, we say things are good, but, but that's not the kind of good we're talking about. We're talking about the the goodness of God. See, all words pale in comparison to explaining the goodness of God. They they just do. We're we're not going to be able to grasp it. We're not going to be able to say that we we harness it. We're not going to be able to grab it and say, this is the box that God's goodness fits in, so let me just give it to you. We're not going to be able to do that. So, So what do we do? We give praise to God and we give thanks to him, saying, I don't know how you do it, but you do it, and I'm thankful for it. And, and that, that's what that mountaintop experience is supposed to do. That's why God allows us to have this mountaintop experience because God truly does want us to, uh, to experience that. So I, I, want, I want to kind of outline something for you guys. Um, that if we're going to praise God um, and we're going to do it with, with everything that we have, we, we've got to listen to that, um, that Psalm 150, verse 6, but we also have to just back it up with 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. And if you guys want these verses, I'll give them to you because I'm going to go through a bunch of verses. Um, but it says, Rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. See, God, he, he intends us... Or he, not in, he intends for us. God, without a doubt, he restores, he provides, and he saves. You can see inside of your life that the, the good things, the truly good things in your life is that God has restored, God has provided, and God has saved you. Uh, um, among other things are, are good and fine and we can enjoy, but when it all comes down to it, the things that are going to last inside of your life, the things on your deathbed that you're going to be re- rejoicing for is how God restored, how he provided, and how he saved you. So as, as we look at how God restores, provides, and saves, we can be joyful about that, but there is no context that, um, that we have unless if we have the valley. And that's why I'm giving you the unfortunate news last. Because agree with it, disagree with it, we can fight all day about it. You would not have the mountain, and you would not appreciate the mountain if you did not have the valley. But we need the valley. I need the valley. That the, the humbleness that, that God gives us is not to break us down but to build this up, to, for us to build him up, for us to, to be able to say, no, not to me be the glory, but for you to be the glory. Because without this, I would be stuck inside of the, the muck and the mire, right? I'd be stuck inside of the valley, trying to just hoping that I could, I could just smell the air of a mountaintop, but never knowing the, the, how incredibly far from the mountaintop I am. But God's grace just catapults us up there, right? Because God is good. So does he care about us inside of the valley? Yes, of course he cares about us inside of the valley because he tells us in the Bible. <laughs> he, 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 told, he told us he cares about us. Psalm 23, 1 through 6, one of the most known 
passages inside of the Bible is this. The Lord is my shepherd. I have what I need. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me by quiet waters. He renews my life. He leads me along the right paths for his namesake. Even when I go down the darkest valley, I fear no danger. For I know you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Only goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord as long as I live. There, there's, there's so much joy to be found inside of the valley because God is with us. You, you may not get anything out of the sermon other than this. God has never left you, nor will he ever leave you. We can be sure of that. We can see the evidence of that. And you may say that there is no, uh, there's, there's no evidence of, of God because you've never seen him, but you can watch my life. You can watch the lives of many, many, many others and see how God has stepped in and walked with people. Man, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a living testimony of, of God not giving up on stupid people. I mean, constantly, you guys. And God is just throwing goodness at me. And he's walking with me. And he's taking his staff and he's taking his rod and he's beating me. <laughs> he's, he's guiding me. He's strengthening me. He's giving me everything that I need to make it the next day. And when he's done with me, I won't be here anymore. And I won't care. Right? That is God. That is God's character. He's gentle. He's loving. He, he corrects. That is loving. Correcting us. But we, we don't feel that. In the valley, we, we turn our eyes away from God because we feel like that God is the God of the mountain. And, in, and with Abraham and with Moses and with Jesus and with uh, Elijah, he is the God of the mountain, you guys. He, he restores and he loves and he provides and he, he saves people. But God also, he walks with sinners. But when we're inside of the valley, we don't see that. What we see is Satan. <laughs> we see the works of evil. And in John 10.10, 10, it says it like this. And, and you may have heard sermons about this. You may, I'm just going to put things inside of context. The verse I'm about to read is not talking about the devil does this. It's talking about the works of evil do this. So those who serve something that is worldly, they're going to lead you to this. This world is going to drain you from this. And this is what it says. A thief, a thief, so the evil one, the enemy, comes to only to kill, steal, and destroy. And we, we may muddy that up and think that, that we're saying that, that the devil does that. We say that a lot, and it's, it's the product of the devil, so, so we, we can just rest there and, and agree. But the, the enemy comes only to kill, steal, and destroy. But, and this is what us preachers do a bad job of doing. We don't say the second part of the verse, which says, I have come so that you may have life and have it in abundance. So you so Jesus is saying the thief, the, the evil one, the, the results of, of this world, is, are, they're going to kill, they're going to steal, and they're going to destroy. That is where they're going to leave you. And they don't care about you, and Satan really doesn't care about you. But, but look at the contrast here, guys. Jesus is saying that he has come, that uh, I have come. I have come. Some, so some of you may have life and have it in abundance. See, God wants us to have the mountaintop, but he knows, he knows how the journey is going to, to correct us and, 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 and work and, and kind of mold us into being men and women after his own heart, right? You can't see the mountaintop from, or you can't understand the valley from the mountaintop and you can't appreciate the mountaintop if you haven't been through the valley. 
So should we, should we, and the answer is no, should we beat ourselves up and, and live our lives in living, wearing sackcloths, walking around saying, oh, poor pitiful me in the name of Jesus. Oh, my life is horrible in the name of Jesus. No! Romans 8.18 says this. It says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is going to be revealed to us. Basically, actually I'll just read it again because it says it perfectly. For I consider that the sufferings of present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. Period. Done. Don't need any more. I can walk off stage and you can be, you can be rest assured that, um, that you must praise God, but also that the things that you, that you go through, whether that is you're praising God through the good stuff or you're praising God through the bad stuff, you can still praise God. And if you set your eyes upon Jesus, um, if you do that, then you, you, and you suffer anyhow, anyway, then you can say, consider it pure joy when I go through trials, right? You can say that, that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing to the glory that's going to be shown to us. Forgive me for my language, and I'm not a cusser, and I'm not going to cuss. It's just a cuss word to me sometimes. Um, life sucks. It does. But God is so good. And God's so good that he says, he gives us things like this, nuggets, that the sufferings of our present time do not compare to the glory that will be revealed in us or to us. So it may not be tomorrow, it may not be the next day or 10 years from now, but you will see glory revealed. That is a biblical promise that we will be able to, to bask in the light of God. And there's going to be a day that we, that we, will, um, we will get to that mountaintop feeling and God will be like, I'm not sending you back. <laughs> you don't have to go back down the hill. You don't have to experience the valley anymore. Because God is good. Colossians 3, 2 through 3 says this. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. For you have died and now you are hidden with Christ in God. To set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. For you have died and now you are hidden with Christ in God. It is, this is a blueprint. If you don't know how to live your life, just read this. There's a blueprint in the Bible for what do you do in this situation? What do you do in this situation? And it all kind of shows up in one thing, and it's that you need to praise God. In Colossians, it's, it's saying, set your mind on things above. When, when, you're, when you don't know what to do, set your mind on things above. Do, do what is right in the eyes of the Lord, because you know that, the, that when you do what is right in the eyes of the Lord, you will be blessed for that, Right? Now, now the, the benefit of that mindset is, is also, uh, there's, there's, there is a benefit. There's, it, we shouldn't do things. We shouldn't just follow God just for the benefit. Um, but there are benefits to, to following God and, and following after him. In Matthew 25, um, verses 35 through 40, Jesus is talking about in the end of days, when it's all over, when it's all said and done, what you can rest your hat on I think when, when God says, you're done, over, and He's going to separate uh, the, the goats from the sheep. And like we saw inside of Psalm uh, 23, we're the sheep. Well, take that uh, uh, however you want. If you, I think most of us know that sheep are dumb, okay? And, but sheep have no direction if they don't have a shepherd or a sheepdog or something. But we, 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 we don't have, a, we are running through this life not knowing what's up, what's down, where we should go. But the good shepherd, Jesus, is lining out our lives and saying, I am I'm, I'm passionately wanting you to pursue me. 
If you put my, your trust in me, not inside of this world, please don't put the, the, your hope inside of this world. If you set your mind on things above, when you're in the valley or whether you're on the mountaintop, if you will just praise me, please praise me. I'm not going to do you wrong. When you're in the valley, I'm going to walk with you. When you're on the mountaintop, I'm going to rejoice with you. I'm going to be happy with you. I'm going to be glad that you're there. But you're inevitably going to fill the valley again. Do not turn away from me. When you do that, when you make that decision that you want to follow Jesus, you become a sheep. And God is your shepherd. You may wander off or whatever, but this is what, what Jesus says of the sheep. He, he says that he will say to us, he will say, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. When I was a stranger, you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. And then us, the righteous, will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty or give you, and give you something to drink? When were you a stranger and we invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? And the king, the king, you guys, will say this. Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. God will say, I'm not looking at, at when, were you perfect? I know you weren't perfect. But did you, did you love? Did you follow what I said? Did you love me? Did you give me the glory? Did you praise me? God is not conceited. He is worthy, you guys. He, 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 is, he is not conceited. I'll say it again. He is worthy of our praise. He's not asking for our praise because he needs it. He's asking because he deserves it. He's not commanding our praise because he would, he, we ought to do that. We have to do that. We have no option. Like I said, living testimony of why God is real. So even though we, we shouldn't look to reap the benefits of, of God and following God, we can definitely look and say there are definitely benefits of praising God. That, that, the, that God's graciousness of us, of us saying we give it all back up to you, valley, mountaintop, regardless, praising you. We can say, we, or we can clearly see that God is like, I will bless you. I'm here. You may, be, you, you, you may not be rich, but you'll be taken care of. You, you may feel alone, but you are never alone. And like I said, this sermon is not for the person next to you. It is for specifically you. That you have gone through the things that you have gone through because God truly loves you. If that sucked, then that is, God's, that, that is how God has walked you through the valley. If that has been amazing, then that, has, that is how God has, has been gracious to you. And thank God he has. But if we are to, to follow Christ effectively in each and every day of our lives, giving over more and more and more to his glory, we've got, we've got to live our lives saying that, that, that our, our purpose is to know him and make him known, of course, obviously. But every gift that I get, every situation I get myself into or someone else gets me into, because it's not just you guys, I'm not just picking on you guys, but give God the glory and praise God. I'm going to tear back the veil a little bit as Rylan comes up and, and we're, I'm just going to close this. I'm, I'm trying to get you guys to lunch early, but um, so you guys will let me preach again. Anyway, it, it's just a tactic, no big deal. But I'm going to tear back the veil a little bit and say this. There is no such thing as a mountaintop or a valley, like legit. Like there, there are things that you, you like go up a mountain and you're on a mountaintop, like that's a real thing. And you go into a valley and you, you see a river and you, like, you see like little like nocturnal animals or whatever. I don't know what you see inside of a valley. But you, uh, 
But you, you can experience like physically those things. But, but I, I'm just telling you, it, it's a perception. Because physically, you don't go from valley to mountaintop overnight. And we all know of those days where we were, we were walking on the mountaintop and something happened and we dropped to the valley. See, it's, it's circumstantial things inside of life that are keeping us from trusting God and praising him. Why is it that one, we're one bad phone call away from God being the only thing we can see because we're praying to him constantly? Why don't we just continually pray to him? Why, why, are, why are we people that are so far from God that, we, that, that we, we can only see God when we need God? When God is the, the author, the perfecter, the creator of this world. And all we can see is God when we need him? No, that's not the intention of this life. That's not what God intended. What God intended was for us to know him and make him known, saying to the, to the world that we love him and he is worthy of our praise. So if this is your first time or your one millionth time in church, congratulations. But if, if this is your first time, last time, whatever, somewhere in the middle, it doesn't matter. God has you here for a reason. He wants to make his relationship right with you. And, and you've got to take that step just to say, God, I'm sorry. If this is the first time you've heard about Jesus, I would love to talk to you about how you, become, you, can, you can be adopted by, by God, be, be a Christian, be a Christ follower. I would love to talk to you about that. The majority of you guys in here, though, our hearts are not right with God. Our praise is, is, is on the things of this world and on the mountaintop disgusted at the valley because we think that's where God lives. That's not true. Man, God is walking with you. He's spurring you on. He loves you. If you need to make your relationship right with God, this altar is open. There's nothing magical about the altar other than a, a physical move to do something. So you may come down and make, make a decision or get right with God. Cool. If you can do that by your, at your seat, awesome. I really do feel like that I need the move sometimes. I need the physical step. So Ryland's gonna play this song. I'm gonna be down here. Um, there are people all over the, the place that would love to pray for you. So if you wanna come down here, pray, awesome. Then when that time's over, when the song's over, I'm gonna get back up and, and, uh, and pray and dismiss you guys, dismiss us. But don't let me dismissing you today, the church ending, be the end of God working on your heart. If God's doing something in your heart, listen to God. If he's drawing your heart to do something, listen to God. Don't, don't just leave it here. Bring it into your homes. So he's going to play, pray, and the altar's open. Let's stand, church, and let's respond to God as he leads us this morning. I want to know you, Lord, like I know a friend. I want to know you, Lord. I want to know you, Lord, like I know a friend. I want to know you, Lord. So I'm laying down. All my religion, and I'm laying down. I want to know you, Lord, and I'm laying down. All my religion, and I'm laying down. I want to know you. What do you need to lay down? Lay it at his feet. And I used to think that I could box you in. But I'm laying down. I want to know you, Lord. And I used to think 
that I could box you in, but I'm laying down. I want to know you, Lord, and I'm laying down in all my religion, and I'm laying down. I want to know you. God, we thank you for, for, through your word, encouraging and strengthening us, God. God, we, we look forward to, to what you will do in and through our lives because of the knowledge that you've given us today, God. Um, God, I, I pray that you, will, you won't let it just stay here, stay in this room, God, but we, we can expand that into this entire church and expand that into the neighborhoods, into our families, God. God, we love you. We need you. God, we praise you. God, I, I can't imagine the hurt that some of uh, this room carries with them. God, but I know that you are big. You are good, God. And I also can't even imagine the amazing things you've even done within this room, God. Because you are good. You are worthy of our praise. We love you, Jesus. We will always give you the glory and praise forever and always. Amen. Hey, um, I, I want to encourage you guys, just follow Jesus. <laughs> praise him. And um, as we say our purpose statement, don't forget what God is doing in and through your lives. Let's say our purpose statement. Live for Christ, love people, and make disciples. You are dismissed.